Megan Logan, Self-Love Workbook for Women. Release self-doubt, build self-compassion, and embrace who you are. Self-love isn't as simple as it looks on social media. In fact, for many of us, self-love doesn't come naturally. But the good news is that self-love is a learnable skill that can be cultivated with practice, intention, and mindful attention. We'll take you through some of the highs and lows of learning self-love, while also providing some tips and tools that you can use to develop your own self-love practice. Don't be deceived. It's not all smooth sailing, but it's a journey well worth taking. Because once self-love is a part of your daily experience, you'll live more fully, have healthier relationships, and a greater capacity to share love with others, and possess more agency and autonomy to work towards your goals. So, let's get started. Pause and reflect on how you measure self-value. If you typed self-love into your web browser, the internet would offer you endless links to click. But despite the proliferation of content, many people have misconceptions about what self-love actually is. Self-love isn't about minimizing the challenges of life and relationships, nor does it encourage perfectionism or a be-happy attitude. Rather, self-love is about learning to identify and manage that inner fault-finding critic who has the power to create a hostile, shame-laden environment in our minds and hearts. Now, while we may never silence this voice completely, learning to recognize it and the negative impact it has on our lives helps us to quiet it down a little bit, rather than believing it speaks the truth. A lack of self-love is often the driving force behind behaviors in our lives that cause us pain. For instance, it can manifest in destructive patterns like pursuing emotionally unavailable partners or codependent relationships, compulsive dieting and body hating, self-sabotage, addictions, and unhelpful self-talk. When self-love isn't a part of your life, you perceive yourself to be in a state of deficiency, one that would change only if you could attain the missing ingredient. If only I got that promotion, you think. If only I lost 10 more pounds. If only I had the perfect partner. Usually, a lack of self-love arises from the pain we've experienced in the past. And while it can be difficult, it's important to explore the origin of that pain if we ever want to change how we feel about ourselves. This experience might make you feel vulnerable and raw. For instance, you might find yourself thinking about how your parents taught you to believe that love is transactional and comes with conditions of good behavior. Maybe this, in turn, taught you to believe that you must perform in a certain way or are only worthy of love unless you earn it. Rumination is the first step of the grieving process that comes with change and growth. As you move through this, however, try shifting your focus away from the pain and towards being curious about the dysfunctional patterns that show up in your relationship to yourself and to others. Make time to explore your thoughts and feelings and practice identifying and expressing your emotions with honesty and vulnerability. And don't feel like you have to do this alone. Investing in therapy and nurturing relationships with trusted, supportive people are all part of the self-love journey. Why invest in self-love? Self-love is often portrayed as a happy, celebratory activity that'll leave you with a big grin on your face. So, it can be a shock to learn that the journey to self-love can involve anger, sadness, resentment, and heartbreak. Maybe you're mourning the family you'd wish you'd had, or the pain you've caused yourself and others. Maybe you're grieving for all of the years you've lost to people-pleasing. Years you'll never get back. As you commence your journey to self-love, you might start wondering whether you'll ever get through this difficult process or if it's even worth it. But keep in mind that moods are like the weather. They're seasonal and constantly shifting. This, in fact, might be one of the most important takeaways from this journey of self-love. While difficult emotions might feel unbearable in the moment, often they're an expression of feelings that you've repressed and pushed down for years. 
you may not have been allowed to express your anger at your parents as a child or set healthy boundaries that prioritize your needs. And learning how to do this is crucial for self-love. On the surface, an overly critical inner eye might seem to motivate and inspire, but actually it does the opposite. It results in disconnection, loneliness, and resentment. Hustling to be worthy of value and love from others will never bring true peace, meaningful connection, or help you to reach your full potential. Self-love, on the other hand, will create a system in which you can be the loving and gentle friend, coach, teacher, or parent that's missing in your life. It will open up avenues of grace, forgiveness, support, encouragement, and peace. These channels, in turn, will free up energy and space that you can then redirect to yourself and to your loved ones. Your relationships will become fuller and more robust because you stop seeking validation from others, since you can provide yourself with that validation. Fear, self-doubt, and harsh criticality will melt into nurturing compassion, appreciation, and gratitude. This is why it's worthwhile to persist through those early challenges of the journey to self-love. There is deep calm and peace waiting for you on the other side. Jumpstart your self-love journey by checking in. Before you start your self-love journey, it's important to get a sense of where you're starting from. That way, you'll have greater awareness of the guideposts, goals, and obstacles you might encounter along the way. As you embark on this journey, remember that it won't be linear. You may move forwards and then back and then ahead once more, so don't get discouraged. I'm going to say a couple of statements, and I want you to reflect on them. Decide whether you never feel this way, always feel this way, or if you sit somewhere in between. Ready? I believe I am worthy of love and respect. I believe I'm special. I believe I have a purpose in life. I am capable of communicating what I need and want. I accept and love my body. I believe it's okay to make mistakes. My feelings are as important as everyone else's. I prioritize my needs and emotions as much as other people's. I believe it's okay not to be the best. I trust good things will come to me in life. All right, now think about your responses. If you regularly thought, yeah, that sounds like me, you're starting with a fertile foundation of thriving self-love. If you agreed with the statements most of the time, you're well on your way. Just remember to keep making time to affirm your values and faith in yourself. If these statements were somewhat relatable some of the time, you might feel worthy sometimes, and other times you might struggle to believe you're special and important. Keep working on your self-love. If the statements didn't reflect your experiences at all, you might be struggling to feel loved. But don't worry. Self-love is a practice that everyone can cultivate, step by step. No matter what your starting point is, try jumpstarting your journey by using the following self-love hacks. First, take a hot shower and focus on the smell of the shampoo, the pleasure of the warm water, and the multi-sensory experience. Second, make yourself a cup of your favorite tea or hot chocolate. Third, Connect with nature and take long, full breaths of fresh air. Fourth, close your eyes and listen to the sounds in the room. Maybe you hear city sirens or a crying child, a barking dog, or the quiet hum of your lamp. Try to tune in and listen without judgment. Describe what you've heard out loud, or in a journal. Allowing yourself and others the room to change and grow means moving forward with minimal judgment. Remember, as you change, so will the people and environments around you. Choose grace, gentleness, and compassion. No matter how hard we try, 
there will always be moments when we revert to self-criticism. But luckily, there are tools that you can use to combat these moments with greater ease, fluidity, and compassion. If you notice that you're being self-critical, take a moment to stop and release judgment. Doing this will channel self-respect, dignity, and kindness to you. Low moments are a part of everyone's experience. Getting fired or laid off from a job, being dumped by a romantic partner, not being invited to a social event, having health or fitness setbacks. While certain situations can make you feel small, imagine how you would respond to a dear friend who was going through the same situation. Would you tell them that they were a failure? Or would you lift them up with affirming, supportive words? A great way to be there for yourself when times are tough is to write down words of encouragement as if you were addressing a friend. Then direct those sentiments towards yourself. It might sound something like this. Dear Julia, I'm thinking about you. How are you doing? I know you might be feeling low and hard on yourself. I'm here to take care of you and remind you that you're so strong and special and beautiful, intelligent, funny, and full of grace. You will get through this. This is just a fierce storm that will pass and the moments of serenity and sun will shine through soon. Let me take you out to dinner to your favorite restaurant and let's watch that movie we've been wanting to see. Be gentle and kind to yourself and know that I will always be on your side. I feel very lucky to have you in my life. You amaze me. Yours, Julia. Keep your letter on hand, on your bedside table, in your backpack, tucked in your pocket, so you can pull it out and read it whenever you feel your self-compassion wobble. You'll be thinking of yourself much more kindly before you know it. Build a sturdy self-worth foundation. Self-worth is an important component of self-love. It means knowing that you deserve to be cherished, accepted, and loved by others, and treating yourself the same way. This is important because the way you treat yourself influences how others treat you. The foundation of self-worth might come as a bit of a surprise. It's joy. Simple as that. Ask yourself, what brings me joy? When do I feel closest to my truest, most lovable self? Picture yourself when you feel that way. Think about who you're with, what activity you're engaged in, what thoughts and emotions you have, and how your body feels. You might feel joy when you're gardening, hiking, reading, painting, sewing, doing yard work, riding your bike, looking at art. If you can pinpoint what brings you joy, fantastic. Reflect on how you can create more of these moments in your life. If you're struggling to identify what brings you joy, don't panic. You just need to make some time to explore some new interests. It can be scary or intimidating to try a new activity that you're not sure you'll be good at. But by opening yourself up to this vulnerability, you'll also be able to see how much progress you're capable of making. If you stick with something for a while, you'll become more skilled at it, building your confidence. Before you start something new, try writing down or saying positive affirmations to yourself. Statements like, I'm proud of myself. This is hard and I'm doing the best I can. I'm getting stronger. Sometimes you'll feel yourself making strides in your chosen activities. And at other times, the change will feel slower. When you find yourself feeling low, take a deep breath. And exhale all the negative thoughts, anxieties, and disappointments. Relax and let yourself observe the different seasons, paces, and temperatures of change. This will calm and recenter you, so you feel empowered to pick up the paintbrush, the shovel, or your roller skates again. Fortify your boundaries. Do you ever stay longer at a social event than you'd like? Do you ever say yes to requests that don't suit you? Do you ever feel pressure to drink alcohol or buy things you can't afford? Do you find yourself working on your time off or missing important family functions for last minute emergencies? Do you lack control over eating, intimacy, or alone time? If any of this sounds familiar, it's time to love yourself by setting healthy boundaries. Healthy boundaries are not about controlling other people's behavior. Rather, it's a matter of respecting your limits and communicating your needs clearly. Learning how to set them starts by establishing boundaries for yourself. 
From there, you can build up your confidence in setting and maintaining boundaries with others. Healthy boundaries are a way to make a relationship or experience feel safe. They express what you're able and willing to accept and what you aren't willing to accept and the consequences if other people don't respect those boundaries. Boundaries don't keep people apart. They actually make trusting, authentic, and intimate relationships possible. When practicing boundary setting, don't focus on what you think you or others are doing wrong or what others have to do. Instead, emphasize your feelings by using I statements, such as I need or I feel, and how their behavior is making you feel. This prevents boundaries from turning into unilateral demands, ultimatums, emotional manipulation, playing the blame game, keeping score, or issuing punishments. For instance, if someone is upsetting you by consistently canceling your plans last minute, you could set a healthy boundary by expressing how you feel. You might say something like this. I feel hurt when you cancel at the last minute because it makes me feel like you don't value our time together. Then, let the other person know what you need from them so that you don't feel this way. I need reliability to feel like you care about me. Can you please put our plans in your diary so you remember ahead of time that we're meeting? By focusing on your emotional experience instead of the other person's behavior, you open up the table for collaborative discussion, resolution, and repair. The self-love journey is one of deep introspection, heightened awareness, and compassion. The main takeaway is this. The only way to cultivate self-love is to embrace your complete self, your vulnerability, insecurities, and the struggles that have formed you. By moving forward with greater gentleness, understanding, and loving concern towards yourself, you can transform your life and enrich your relationships with grace and compassion.